they were focused on America in the future, you know, and although it was not Shoah, um, I think it was difficult and painful for her. Um, think about it this way. Her mother, they, her mother had five children, two bo three boys and two girls. Um, and starting sometime, I don't know exactly when, she sent the two boys off to America, okay, her mother. This is sometime before 1907, okay, two older brothers. Um, one of them, the rabbi, um, um, set up in New York, and another one who set up in, in the, was in the, clothing, in the clothing business and made some money. And those brothers were able to put together enough money to bring their two sisters over. First they brought Chaya in, in 1907, and then they brought her younger sister, Mindel, we used to call her Minnie, Aunt Minnie, in 1910. So this is, think about it, and then the mother stayed on with one son who was apparently handicapped, and she didn't want to leave him, and her husband, who apparently was very religious and he didn't want to leave, she sent four of her children to America, perhaps never to see them again. And these children left their mother, perhaps never to see them again. I think of what that must have meant for a mother to send her children off in that way. Something must have been very bad. It's hard to know exactly what, because they didn't say. They talk about hard times, meaning poverty. Um, but it was also a difficult time um, in that area, you know, in 1906, um, there was a big pogrom in Bialystok. Um, there was a pogrom years before that in Kishinev and other areas. I don't know if anything happened in Kikochin per se, but the atmosphere was very, very negative, plus the economic situation, you know. Um, but I keep thinking about my great grandmother and you know, how difficult it must have been for a mother to say goodbye to her children. This little girl, Chaya, traveled uh, at the age of 14 by train. First of all, she probably went by horse and buggy with her mother um, from um, Tikochin to Bialystok to the train station. The same train station is still there um, and said farewell to her there. I know that her mother went back and forth because her mother dyed fabrics. That was what, how she made money. She, she made, took, got, bought fabrics from, Bialystok was a textile center, as you know, uh, at the time, um, and hand dyed them different colors at home. My grandmother always described her mother's hands as always colored uh, from the dyes. So she, and then she would take them into Bialystok to sell. So she took her daughter to the train. This little girl of 14 got on the train. Maybe she was with somebody accompanying her. Um, and then on August 17th, 1907, she um, arrived in Rotterdam and got on a Dutch ship, the Rindum, steerage passage, the lowest level passage, um, and took a 10-day crossing to, the, to New York. Now, and the manifest, the manifest is, is listed family by family. She, um, Chaya is not listed with any other family members. Okay? It's possible that somebody else may, be, may have looked after her. We don't know. But still, she was alone with no family, you know, heading off across the ocean you know, to a world that she didn't know. If you think about Rotterdam at that time, apparently, you know, it was a major port of departure for hundreds of thousands of immigrants, not just Jewish, but other immigrants to the United States. Um, she had to get by train, ch change trains several times, then, then stay in Rotterdam, probably in some kind of hotel, who knows what, hostel, until the boat was ready. You know, and apparently there were, you know, hostels catering to the Jewish and other immigrants. And, you know, they were not always so, so nice. And people, you know, they often took advantage of these people. Haya knew, spoke Yiddish. Maybe she knew some Russian, I don't know. She could write. Um, uh, but she certainly didn't speak Dutch or English or anything. So there she was in Rotterdam waiting for this ship. And then 
um, 10 days at sea. God knows what that was like, you know. Um, I have uh, photographs of the ship, um, of the outside of the ship, and also of the luxury cabins up on the top. She was not there. <laughs> uh, she was down below. So she got to New York. I think that most of these people wanted to forget about, you know, whenever I asked her about Poland or the old world, you know, she would say, or Europe, I would tell her I was going to Europe to do it to her trip. I was always excited about going to, she said, it was her, in her own accent, she would say, Europe, I was born there. In her, she, she didn't want to think about it very much.